and in this section I would like to present the Granger test that is very often used in econometrics to check the causality between certain variables. So let's consider the following equation where y is a function of two of its legs yt minus 1 and yt minus 2 and where y is also a function of the two left values of the independent variable x xt minus 1 and xt minus 2. And in this case, the, Grand, the Granger test checks whether delta 1, the coefficient at x t minus 1, and delta 2, the coefficient at x t minus 2, are zero simultaneously. In other words, the, uh, the test checks whether x has predictive content for y, whether x is, can be used for predicting the future values of y. And to explain this test, let's consider a very famous example in econometrics. The, quest the question that is very often asked in microeconomics, is it GDP that causes the money supply or is it the money supply that causes GDP? And to answer this set of, as to this set of questions, we can construct the following system of equations where GDP, as you can see, is a function of the lagged values of the money supply and also a function of the lagged values of, of itself. And in the second equation, money supply is a function of its own lagged values and the lagged values of GDP. Since in this case we've got two variables, this is called bilateral causality. And when it, when it comes to this example, there are four possibilities. So we can either have unidirectional causality from M to GDP. And it means that the estimated coefficients on the left M in the equation number two, so in our system this will be equation number one, are statistically different from zero. And the estimated coefficients on the left GDP in the second equation are not statistically different from zero. So in this case, alphas will be statistically significant and deltas will be statistically insignificant. And if we have unidirectional causality from GDP to M, then the estimated coefficients on the left M in the first equation are not statistically different from zero, and the estimated coefficients on the left GDP in the second equation are statistically different from zero. So if we go back to the system, in this case, alpha is now statistically insignificant, alphas are statistically insignificant, whereas deltas are now statistically significant. So in this case, we have causality from GDP to M. We can also have feedback or bilateral causality. And in this case, the coefficients of M and GDP are statistically different from zero in both regressions. So that means that alphas are statistically significant and deltas are statistically significant. And we can also have the fourth possibility where the variables are independent of each other. So that means that the coefficients of M and GDP are not statistically different from zero in either of the regressions. So in this case, alphas are not statistically significant and deltas are not statistically significant. The correct interpretation of the Grinder test results will be the following. So in a regression of y on other variables, including its own past values, if we include past or lagged values of x and we find out that x significantly improves the prediction of y, so econometrically uh, the coefficients at lagged values of x are statistically significant, then we say that x Granger causes y. So it's not just causes y, but it, all, it can also be used for predicting the future values of y. And a similar definition applies if y Granger causes x. So if we find out that the, co uh, the coefficients at the left values of y are statistically significant in the equation of x, then we say that y Granger causes x. So in other words, that it not just causes x, but it, ca but it can also be used for predicting the future values of x.